So today we're doing a front brake job on a 2002 F-150. This happens to be a uh, XTR model, uh, which is a Canadian uh, package that comes with updated tires and uh, running boards and a few other things. But when it uh, comes to, to brakes, you need to know your stud pattern and uh, the GVRW of the truck. Here we have a five bolt pattern and the GVW of your truck will just be inside the driver's passenger door. There's a, a sticker on the side there and uh, it has the information on it. This one's a uh, 6,250 pound. So you'll need to know that uh, when you're ordering parts because there are different uh, size rotors, different lug nuts etc so you'll need to know that so there's a picture of the tire the rotor the calipers off and hung nicely on a piece of wire and the caliper bracket off gives you a kind of a better idea of what it looks like uh, we're going to do it in the reverse order so I've got it apart and uh, we'll be putting it back together so I bought the performance rotors uh, these happen to be 12.1 inches 5 bolt drilled and slotted cost me about 152 bucks but you know uh, you've got a truck and you want the brakes to work and most of the braking is done in the front so that's what you want you want to probably get the best I don't think you need really need the same in the back the rear of the truck but you know if you got the money in the budget why not so the discs were the Ray Bestos brand also and these are the pads performance pads to match the the, the discs and there's a, there's a pad there and there's some instructions on the box. They've come with all the nice little shims that go on the brackets and on the top of the uh, the caliper. So I wasn't really expecting that. So that's a bonus. Uh, there's the calipers there. Um, I The sliders that the calipers bolt onto are here. They go back and forth with a rubber boot that uh, keeps the special grease in and the weather out. Um, one of them had cracked and the water had gotten in inside and it took me about 40 minutes to free up the pin because it had rusted in there so I've cleaned that all up but I've decided to get new pins uh, they come in a set of two so they'll both get new pins and they will get greased with a special uh, brake silicone high temperature brake lubricant grease and then uh, I bought new boots all the way around to keep the water out because I don't want to be doing this again uh, anytime soon so uh, these are the bolts that hold the brake uh, caliper bracket on and they're an 18 millimeter head uh, I had to use um, this bar plus uh, a cheater bar on the end of it to loosen them off so when you get them out you want to make sure that you clean them up and never seize them and I'm actually going to put never seize on these little guys and uh, the brackers, I should say, that hold the caliper onto the pin. So I'll, I'll grease these all up and then never seize these bolts also. So one of the first things I need to do is wash the uh, wax or the oil, whatever it is on here. I think it's wax. I need to wash that off with hot water and soap. And then I'll use some brake cleaner. Get those all cleaned up and then keep my hands off of them. Uh, then the next thing I will do will be to put these new clips on where the uh, brake pads here's the, where the brake pads slide back and forth and I'll put a little tiny bit of the grease on there too according to the directions on the pads see it shows here to put grease on the, uh, the caliper pins and also on the, uh, the little pads for these shims so I'll get that do all done up and then we'll move to the next step so uh, the light's not that great in here, I don't know if you can see it. So I've got some uh, dish soap and some warm water and a scotch Bright pad and I'm just going around and cleaning up all the surfaces, getting that wax off there and then I'll put some gloves on and keep my greasy fingers off of there. So now I've got them washed and now I'm going to use a little bit of brake cleaner and clean them all off and I've donned the gloves. Once I've got them cleaned, I'll just hang them on the... Uh, the lugs on the wheel. Just a note for you guys that uh, might want to turn your rotors down. Uh, there's a minimum thickness that's stamped 
along the edge here uh, so they know how much they can turn it down without it being a problem but on my old rotors uh, you can't see anything so um, you'd have to look up in a, you know, a manual to find out how much you can turn down those those things are pretty old a lot of the uh, drilled holes are, uh, or have rust uh, filled right up in them and uh, they're gouged pretty good so I just thought I'd get new ones. So now the rotors are all cleaned up and I've just got them hanging on the, uh, on the lugs. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I am putting these new, I'm going to pry off the old shims off the brackets, caliper brackets, and I'll put the new ones on with a slight bit of uh, the specialized grease. Okay, I've got the new shims installed in the uh, caliper bracket, and uh, there's an extra one. Here's an old one. There's the new one that's installed in the caliper itself. You have to make sure that the pistons are compressed so you don't rip the rubber boots that protect the pistons when you put this clip in. And also, you'll need it good and compressed to put the new pads on and get it over the, the new rotor. And there's a picture of the new uh, shims on the caliper bracket. You want to make sure that they're bottomed out and fit correctly so that they... Uh, the pads slide nicely and there's a little bit of the silicone grease special silicone grease that'll put on those so now I've used some of the special lubricant and just put a slight smear on the surfaces where the uh, the brake pads ride um, the instructions here is telling me to put a little bit of lubricant along this edge here and along that edge there and it's actually the showing outside the here but I'm not too sure or sorry, the outside here, but I'm not too sure whether I'm going to do that or not. Um, I've also greased up my caliper pins, and you want to push them back and forth a little bit and make sure that you haven't created a, a total air seal in there. Otherwise, you go to push it in, and it'll want to push it back out a bit because you put too much grease in it. Okay, there we go. Uh, caliper brackets greased, never seized, cleaned up, and ready to rock. So now that the caliper brackets are ready to grow, go, we've got the disc in place, the rotor. Uh, we're going to put the bracket over top and bolt it up in the two spots behind here with the 18 millimeter head. Okay, according to this manual here, the caliper anchor bracket bolts are 136 foot-pounds of torque, while the caliper bolts are 21 to 26 foot pounds of torque. So here I have my handy dandy torque wrench, <clears throat> old design, still works. 138, 136 foot pounds of torque, that's almost maxed out. This one goes to 140. So I'll torque those uh, bracket bolts up. 136 pound, foot pounds. So 136 foot pounds of torque, boy that's a lot of pressure. I had this long handled torque wrench and uh, took everything I had just to uh, to get it up to 136 foot pounds because uh, you know there's only a certain amount of clearance in there and it's much easier to do do it now before you put the calipers on but uh, when you when you put those brackets on just put them in nice and uh, finger tight just to make sure you're not binding on anything once you're confident that it's uh, fit properly then you can hit it with the torque wrench. So now I'm going to put a set of the pads on and then I'll put the caliper over top and then I will tighten up the uh, caliper retaining bolts onto the little slider. So I fit the bra or the uh, the pads onto the uh, the caliper bracket. Everything looks nice. Now I'll just take the C-clamp off, slide the caliper over the top and then uh, put the bolts through the caliper and into our uh, guide slider here and put the tor torque them up to 36 foot-pounds and uh, then it'll be just a matter of putting the, the wheels back on and pumping the brakes. This, this piece here is slotted so that your caliper will slide over it and then it, 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 it acts as a retainer for when you're doing up your bolt so that has to be lined up properly to get your caliper in there and like I said before tighten that up to 36 uh, 
pounds per square inch, foot pounds I mean. And then you just want to check it a little bit. There'll be some resistance. It moves. It'll wear in a little bit. And that's it. So everything's tightened up. You want to make sure that your uh, your brake line isn't twisted uh, when you put your caliper on. Now it's just a matter of putting my uh, my tire back on and, and tightening up the, the lug nuts. Make sure you don't tighten the lug nuts up with an air gun. It just tightens them up too tightly. I've taken a wire brush to it. And uh, now I just got to do the other side, put the wheels on, and uh, we're done. And it's just a matter of pumping the, the brakes up, make sure they work, and it uh, should last me quite a few years. So there you have it, job complete. Uh, I didn't use the air gun to rattle it up. Uh, the lug nuts up because uh, they can do them up too tight unless you are really experienced or have a, uh, a regulator. You don't want to go too tight with those. I just use a, uh, a tire iron, old fashioned style. Go around them twice. So uh, now I'll just pull the blocks away, start her up, uh, pump the brakes a few times to make sure they feel good. And then uh, I will probably check the torques again in a day just to make sure everything's, everything's good. So there you have it. Hope you have a easy time like I did. Ciao. So they pump the brakes, everything's fine. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, if you've been adding brake fluid over the years and your pads were pretty thin, you might want to remove some of the brake fluid out of your master cylinder before you start this process because as you push the plungers or the, the pistons in on the calipers to make room for the new pads, it pushes brake fluid back into the reservoir and you might overflow your reservoir and uh, dump some of that uh, extra brake fluid that you wouldn't need with the new pads onto your driveway or into your engine compartment. So that's that.